اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصل على سيدنا محمد في الملائ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ما لدي سيد السلطان لي أسر شاء الله الفائز دغستاني سيد الشيخ محمد ناظم عدل الحقاني من سيد الشيخ محمد عدل رباني إن شاء الله أعينونا بعون الله وكونوا عوننا عسى نحظى بفضل الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته السلام عليكم Those who are joining us for the first time, welcome to you. Those who are joining us online, welcome to you. Wa alaykum salam. Also, those who are saying, sending their salams. Our way is companionship and goodness is in being with good ones. That is the secret of tariqa. You can sit and write books about what Sufism is. This is Sufism. Finding a person you trust and deem them to be uh, nearer and dearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than you, then attaching yourself to them. That is tariqa. Simply the way of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is suhbah. He was granted to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's khalifa to Allah fi ardi. He was the one endowed, given the the full deputyship of representing Allah in His creation. And the people that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, as-su'ada, the happy ones from them, are those who met and accepted Him. That's all they did. And he took those people by virtue of association, by virtue of suhbah. He took those people from the culture of machoism. The Arabs were very macho, the tribal society. There was a, a there was a, a before Islam. There was a battle that lasted forty years between two tribes because one person shot the camel of another tribe. They fought a war forty years. They almost annihilated each other over a camel. That's the culture. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala honored those who the Sahaba, Ashab al Nabi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them such honor is that he associated them, connected them to al Masum, to Sayyidina Muhammad the infallible one, the perfect character one. That's all they did. That suhbah, that companionship with Sayyidina Muhammad transformed this whole generation, 124,000 Sahabi, into stars, guides for humanity. Any which one of them you take as a guide will make you reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. How? By suhbah. And now, subhanAllah, even that suhbah, shaitan, yani, this, this world we live in, is trying to disrupt. It's very difficult now to be with with people. With this corona now coming, to go travel. We used to travel to see our murshid, our sheikh, so often. Now travel is so difficult to go see, visit one's sheikh. Um, because of the value. A man who is a wali of awliyaullah he is reflecting the prophetic characters in his time a wali is what is his wilaya what is his claim to fame why is he a wali allah tawalla shay what becomes of him when he becomes a wali he becomes molded with the love of sayyidina muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he becomes 
a true follower of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And because of that, he tastes the sweetness of an ishq, of ishq and love. Halawat al Iman. And then those who reach the station of Ihsan, they live by Allah for Allah. All this is what? The mold is Sayyidina Muhammad. They're just they're just aligning themselves, the awliya, to him. So what they become? Inheritors of what? The lights. Anwar Sayyidina Muhammad. Anwar al Anbiya. They become inheritors of the knowledges, ulum. They become inheritors of the adab, the manners of Sayyidina Muhammad. How Allah was sending a Nabi to Bani Israel every now and then? The awliya are, Prophet Sallallahu hadith are like the Anbiya. They inherit those stations. The real ulama, the awliya. And this is what the you know, mystery of the tariqah is dependent on having one of you attaching yourself to one of those men because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a chain it's a tree if you attach to one you're attached to the tree that's the whole that's the whole purpose of tariqa connecting yourself to one who's connected to one who's connected to one who's connected to one who's connected to one, connected to one all the way to sayyidina muhammad This is it. No mystery to it. But we are living in end of times. Akhiru zaman. And we are the last, yani, we are, Prophet ﷺ uh, described to, in one hadith he says, from the signs of the end of times, uh, amata rabbataha. in another narration, rabbaha, that when the slave girl gives birth to its master, to her master, or her mistress. Mistress? Lady master, what is that? Mistress. mistress. And and uh, in the continuation of that narration, and that you see the naked, almost naked, uh, barefooted Bedouins start to compete in high rises, and you, Subhanallah, the description is physically now manifested. I went one time. Uh, we stopped in Dubai for a day, and one brother came and took us. One of the Ikhwan took us around to show us, and he literally said, "He said uh, that now in Dubai, if." You don't own a tower on the main strip of the street, main street. You're not considered rich. Doesn't matter how many billions you have. <laughs> they compete in high rises. And those two hadiths, the first one indicating that all the values and good manners will be reversed. All the uh, principles upon which morality is based, ethics are based, are upside down. When the slave girl gives birth to her mistress or master, that means everything is upside down in terms of etiquette, in terms of values in, in society. Everything is on its head. So the moral values, the moral fabric of societies will be finished. That's one big sign. And this is, we can all witness it. You don't need to be a brain surgeon to know that morality is uh, not on taking a back seat on the bus, not on the bus anymore. Uh, what used to what used to be the fitra, what used to be taken for granted as good manners or good values, Nah, not many people care about. And the second aspect that we are in Akhiru Zaman is that you see the naked, barefooted Bedouins 
are the masters building competing in societies now they're the ones the governing because who builds in societies those who have power those who have wealth okay indicating that the financial systems of the world will be up on its head on their heads upside down and the political systems will be upside down just in one hadith prophet وسلم, describing the state of the world we live in today Mawlana used to despise democracy you say hypocrisy not democracy he said shaitan was happy with two things the, that made him Mulana used to joke he said he he even envied uh, those people who came because he could never come up with them with those two things one thing is <laughs> is uh, evolution that we we evolved from uh, one cell and we became monkeys and then we came uh, became human beings he says that's absolute kufr takes you out of the milla completely if uh, we can we, you know we can sit uh, like that inshallah Bismillah. complete kufr is is evolution if you accept what uh, darwin uh, uh, says it takes you out of the milla contradicts <laughs> The whole creation that Quran and Holy Books fell. And the second one he says, uh, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, that he despised so much was democracy. He said those two things, Shaitan was so happy with those who came up. They became huge deputies for him, the, the two systems. Because democracy, what is democracy? Democracy is the rule of man over the rule of God. That is democracy. If a bunch of men come together and they decide that uh, we want to make one night where everybody can rob everybody, just open season, you can go and do. They have now uh, things like that, uh, ideas where, okay, if we make uh, adultery halal we make they can if society votes on any any immoral act it becomes law so rule of man over rule of god god didn't come from heaven the other one god came from apes those two things uh, that People are take lightly. Even even unfortunately, Muslims nowadays, they fall into this trap. Oh, it's a science and it's proven, and there's uh, this and there's that. They come and tell you about. Oh, you're a Muslim. Yes. How can you say that? You believe in the Prophet ﷺ is Sadiq al Mastuq. He is the truthful one. Sheikh. Yes. So how are you saying now that he's not truthful? You say the Holy Quran is Allah's words. Yes. How can you believe in this? So we are in, living in, in this difficult times, but at the same time, it presents amazing opportunities for believers. مَنْ أَحْيَا سُنَّةِ عَنْدَ فَسَادِ أُمَّةِ فَلَهُ أَجْرُ سَبْعِينَ أَوْ مِئَةَ شَهِيدٍ who brings one sunnah at the end of times that has been forgotten man ahyaha brings it back to life inda fasadi ummati when my name when my nation is corrupt anyone doubts now the state we live in of corruption in the muslim world and otherwise if you bring one sunnah back to prophet sallallahu he said you have the rewards of a hundred martyrs a hundred people who fought and gave their lives in Allah's way, you will have the rewards of a hundred of them for one sunnah, for Amama. Amama is forgotten now. Go anywhere. <laughs> when I first moved here, I, they had uh, rented, it was before Ramadan, they had rented a basketball court 
because the jama'a was, was big. And so I happened to, to stay close by. I went there. Maybe six, seven hundred people. And I was the only one with Amama. Not the Imam, not the Mufti, nobody. No Amama. al Mutijan Arab. There's 40 hadiths about Amama. Ambiya, every Nabi was wearing Amama. They weren't wearing uh, angels. The angels that Allah sent to support Sayyidina uh, Muhammad وسلم, in the Quran, Allah said about them, Musawimin uh, uh, means they're wearing their amama with a tail. That's Musawimin. So, you put a turban, you have the reward of 100 shaheed in this time. And in one narration, Prophet وسلم, was asked, Shaheed of us or of them? He says, no, of you. He'll get the reward of a Sahabi Shaheed. A hundred. So, yes, the dangers are much more. The difficulties are much more now. But at the same time, for those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them tawfiq and steadfastness to hold on to their faith and to try to please Allah and His Prophet, the rewards are astronomical. And you find waqalil, you find in places, you go to the mashayikh, few, few, few following awliya. You go political leaders, uh, leaders, hey, they, they fill out stadiums. Mashayikh? But the, the, the men of Allah, few. And nowadays, men of Allah are hiding themselves as well. Because they don't want to be fitna for the people. If if people disrespect awliya, there's very, very bad uh, consequences. So they hide themselves. They don't show themselves because people stop believing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, grant us to, to have success and to have understanding and to have clarity until we leave this dunya to die on this love of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and following his way and to be connected to real men of Allah in this time uh, inshallah so that we we will reach that shore of safety